happy December everybody. It's Christina with Glam Farmhouse Woodworking. I wanted to get on here and share with you guys a project that I'm working on for our Christmas decorations in the front yard. So I'm not going to be able to decorate with a ton of lights this year because I just had a baby. Um, but I wanted to do something that still had a wow factor to it. And I found these plans for some huge reindeer online. I'll share the link below for the plans, but this video is gonna show you guys how I go about building them, following these plans, but kind of modifying them to be a little bit more bud budget friendly. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So to be a little more budget friendly, I went with half inch plywood instead of three quarter inch. The plans call for a three quarter inch, however, um, because I just had a baby, I haven't been working for several months, so money is a little tight, and this saved me probably about $200 getting the half inch, but I have, as you can see, I need to clean up the shop, I have a ton of scrap wood over there. So I plan to build these reindeer, and on the back side of the reindeer, I will add some support pieces to kind of straighten these out and make sure that it's nice and sturdy and it's not gonna go anywhere. But now that all of the pressure treated plywood is dry, the next step is just going to be laying out the patterns and drawing them and cutting them out with the jigsaw. That's the beauty of this project is you only need a jigsaw. Um, Things like a drill and stuff are going to come in handy whenever we attach the hardware because as you can see on the neck, there is a few bolts that will add, but you can always tighten those with just like a pair of pliers or a wrench or something. Um, so really the only power tool you need for this project is a jigsaw. So let's get started on drawing out the templates on these guys and cutting them out. This part of the process was probably the most tedious, having to cut out the patterns and then trace them onto the plywood before cutting them out with the jigsaw. All right, I traced out the body first. Now I'm going to cut this out with my jigsaw and then I'm going to trace a second body because we are making not the just the standing one but we're going to do the grazing one as well so i'm going to cut this out real quick with the jigsaw and then trace it on a second sheet and cut a second body out now that we have two of the bodies cut out we'll have to go back over here and cut out four of the ginormous antlers this project is pretty repetitive as you literally just have to cut out the patterns, trace them, and then cut them with a jigsaw. And you have to do that over and over and over again for each piece. And that's pretty much it. Since I did two deer, I had to cut out eight sets of legs, two bodies, two ears, four antlers, and four hips and shoulders. I had blisters on my hands from the jigsaw work, but you'll see that it's well worth it. Okay, so don't do what I did and not read the instructions all the way. Um, I had opened up all of the patterns except the head and the head has how to position each piece onto a piece of plywood to maximize your sheet of plywood and with plywood being so expensive, you gotta do that and I didn't and I, probably wasted one sheet of plywood because I only cut out one antler on a piece of plywood. So I used two pieces of plywood for two antlers and then the scraps for the ears and stuff. Um, and you should do two antlers on one according to the plans. So don't do what I did, save a little bit of money. I'm gonna have to go run out and probably get an extra sheet or two of plywood now. So as you can see here, two antlers fit perfectly on one sheet of plywood. Um, looking at the instructions, it tells you how to lay out all of them and I didn't see this. So definitely, look. I think this is the head 
part. So I was saving the head for last. I didn't realize that this would be here for reference. So um, go by this and that way you can maximize your plywood and get two antlers out of one instead of doing what I did and only get one antler and having a bunch of scraps. After I used the paper stencil to cut out one piece, I then just used the pieces that I cut out to trace and cut out the remaining pieces that were left. Also, I don't want to hear any smack about how I'm cutting on the ground with my Lowe's and Home Depot buckets. Um, I didn't want to cut on the saw horses because I didn't want to damage the saw horses with the jigsaw blade because they did cut into the bucket some. And also my back is fine. I literally gave birth um, like 10 weeks before this video was made. So if anything, that hurt my back more than this because I do this all the time. My back is used to it. So don't be smack talking me. After all of the pieces were cut out, I just kind of went over the edges to get any tear away off with sandpaper and I started painting them with a roller and I know a bunch of y'all are going to say why not a sprayer um, I had a ton of pieces as you can see here and I did not feel like tarping off my entire shop to spray um, because that would have been like a hot mess and I, I did three coats of uh, paint and yes, I know I could have used primer, but I got this five gallon bucket of paint for 20 bucks. So to use primer, it would have cost me more money. So I just went ahead and did three coats on each side using this exterior grade satin white paint. Like I said, I got on clearance. So um, it did take a little bit longer to do, but painting is therapeutic for me. So I had fun. After each piece got three coats of paint front and back, it was time to bring out to the front and assemble. I went ahead and pre-drilled and screwed together some support pieces to the antlers and for the neck that would connect to the body. And once I did that, I connected a neck to the body using the provided bolts from the place I got the plans from. And then it was time to move them into the yard and assemble. I used some L brackets and some other support pieces to really sturdy this thing up because as you can see in this video, once we started putting it together, uh, the half inch plywood definitely was not sturdy enough. So I used scrap pieces of wood that I'll show y'all in the daytime how it looks. Once we got both deer up, the only thing I had left to do was add some ribbon around their necks and then add the spotlights for the nighttime. All right, I wanna share with you guys the bracing that I did on the deer. Since I cheaped out and used half inch plywood, we really had to brace it because it was a little wobbly and wouldn't stand up to the winds if so. so. I'm going to turn it around and show you guys um, how we braced it. Okay, so because I used half inch plywood instead of three quarter inch, um, we really had to brace the hell out of this thing. I only, the reason one's painted and one's not is because I was running out of paint and I only wanted to paint what you could see from the road. Um, so that's why that's painted and the other one's not. Um, but anyways, I had a bunch of scrap like maple and two by fours that we used for the bracing of the legs, both the back and the fronts. And then I cut large corner brackets out of pressure treated plywood for all of the 90 degree joints, including the ears. Um, and then we used some large pieces to stabilize the neck and we used two pieces to stabilize the neck on the standing deer because obviously more weight is having to be held up high. Um, but yeah, that's how we stabilized the deer. Oh, and then the, the standing deer, we put a piece um, in between his antlers there to just hold them steady so in case the wind blew, they wouldn't be blowing all over the place. Here we just added, um, let me show you, we just added string to hold it together um, but since that one is higher up and is more prone to getting heavy wind we decided to do that 
And then as you can see, we have string and wire with stakes in the ground um, holding it so that way it can't go that way, can't come this way. And then I added the cute little bows on the fronts. So that, I think that really made them look really nice. But anyways, that that's the deer. And the next thing is I'm going to be putting um, spotlights up at night to shine on them because when it's dark, you can't really see, see them at night. But that is them. <laughs>